The most simple change process happens in three phases, unfreezing, movement, and refreezing. During the unfreezing process, a manager must recognize what the right form the past is wrong for the future. The longer the past working model was in use, the more resistant to change the manager may face. In the movement phase, sources of resistance, including lack of clarity, lack of capability, and lack of sufficient incentive, incentives. The biggest deterrent in the movement phase is the level of clarity and the employees might have to the situation. As the magnitude of change increases, so does the level of uncertainty and resistance to change. In the third phase, the refreezing is intended to put forces in place to reinforce the change so that it is more established. A critical step, first step in overcoming resistance to change is to be clear between how things were before and why the past approach was successful and how things are going to be different in the future and why the past, what worked in the past might not work in the future. The process can involve communicating the reasons for the change or having an effective analyze of the affected analyze the need for change. Involving the affected can often increase the level of buy-in and, and reduce the resistance to change. Once the need for change has been identified, a manager must set into motion the following that change. While the manager must deal with the resistance to change, they must also put into motion a plan and preparation for implementation and the evaluation of the outcomes. During the planning and preparation phase, the manager must analyze timing, build support, communicate, and obtain the participation and incentivize their employees. To begin the implementation phase, a manager must choose a focus. Change can be focused on the strategy, structure, systems, technology, shared values, and staff. The choices depend on the objectives to be accomplished, which have been linked to the problems identified and the assessment to change. The manager must determine the effect and frequency of change. When, the in, 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 when, evaluate, when evaluating the change outcomes, the manager will use tools such as data collection, comparing outcomes to goals, and finally, by communicating the results. Data collection can include quantitative or qualitative data, cost, amount of change, and timing. Outcomes are compared to goals by, by use of benchmarks that have been set earlier on in the changing process. Feedback of the results is collected, and the manager must decide whom to ask the feedback from and how the feedback will be obtained. All right, guys, we're gonna have some changes. We're gonna be switching things up a little bit. You guys have been working individually for the most part now, but now we're gonna do it in teams. What, what do we gotta change for? Why can't it just be the same and leave it where it's at? Yes, we get to work in teams? Oh yeah. Perfect. So we have some unhappy campers with the new decision to switch into teams. So let me guys throw you a win. First to get in the groups, get to the competitive advantage in the next challenge. You gonna be my team or not? Yeah. All right. All right, so do you want to be in a group? I don't know, what about everybody else? Do you want to be in a group? Yes. Okay, are you gonna join us? Yeah, okay.